there i am sam from nays knits and this is podcast number five um yeah so if you're new to the channel i am a advanced beginner knitter um i've been knitting now for about seven eight months um i started just because i was curious i've been making my own clothes with a sewing machine and i kept seeing knitted items and i was just getting curious and i just wanted to try it so I jumped into the deep end and I decided to knit people Christmas presents. We decided to have a, a kind of make your own Christmas, um, which was fun. And I just continued and then I thought I'd share because I love watching knitting podcasts and a lot of the knitting podcasts out there are aimed towards people that have been knitting a long time. So I thought it'd be nice to have something a little bit more you can see my mistakes and learn from them and I can share my mistakes and I can show my progress and all those kind of things. I'm also disabled, I'm a wheelchair user, um, not in the house, just when I'm out and about. Um, and uh, yeah, so I like to show, share, ugh, I like to share the accessibility side of things as well. And yeah, so this week I've done quite a bit of knitting and I've got some whips to show you and I'm quite happy with the progress they're making and I've got some acquisitions as well some of the wool that I ordered what I talked about last podcast has arrived so I can show you that as well I'm also wearing some new glasses so be kind um yeah so let's get cracking shall we uh, what have we got let's see So first thing I'm going to show you is the Nabelli. Yes, I cast it on and I'm very pleased. Uh, right then. Get the stuff. Oh, oh gosh. Uh, right. Okay, so the Nabelli. So the Nabelli is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter. Um, it's so accessible. And I'm finding it really well written as well. So if you're interested in starting to do colour work knitting, I, re I do recommend this pattern because I am finding it comforting and it's only two colours. So, well, it's three colours, but you only hold two at the same time. So it's nice and easy to get started and there's no real long floats. So, yeah, so Kate and Hunter Novelli. I will put a better picture up, but there's my black and white copy there. And yeah, so the one thing I love about this pattern is it comes in 12 sizes. Now, if you've been on my podcast before, you know that I am trying really hard to find pattern designers that are super size inclusive because I want everyone to be able to make whatever they want and I don't want to show people stuff that they can't knit. I'm not interested in that. So Caitlin Hunter, Boyland Knits. Uh, so comes in 12 sizes. The smallest size is 36 inches and it goes up to 72. Really good. So I'm very happy about that. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm knitting size three. I was knitting a different size and I'll tell you a little story. <laughs> I actually completed the colour work on this uh, knit, but I realised, hello mealman, but I realised it wasn't the right size for me. Even though I'd measured it and double checked and I'd done my swatches, double checked, it wasn't right, was it? Are you coming up up? You wanna come up up and see everybody? Wanna come up? Yeah, so it wasn't quite right. And then I also noticed when I was doing third colour, I managed to slip a stitch. I don't know how that happened. I think I was just tired or emotional or something like that. And yeah, I didn't notice. And then I realised the top half of my colour work had gone <laughs> had gone a bit squiffy. So <laughs> I just thought, sod it, I'm just gonna start again. <laughs> because the size I was knitting which was a good size and I measured it all. Yeah, he's also started off. He just turned the TV off. I don't know how he's done that. What did you do? How did 
did you do that? What were we watching? Should we turn that off? Let's turn that off. <laughs> turn the DVD player on, turn the TV on. Um, yeah, so... What was I saying? Oh, God. Oh, it gives me good light. I'll keep it on. <laughs> He's my lighting director, what can I say? Um, yeah, so... What was I... Yeah, the, the original size that I did on the on the stuff worked out perfectly, but in real life it looked like I was knitting it for an eight-year-old. So I'm doing size three, and it looks a lot better. It actually looks a bit too big, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm just I'm just going to carry on. Um, so I am knitting it with. Ooh, this is it so far. I've done about three three rows of colour work. It's a really pretty pattern. It's a it's an Italian style from her travels in Italy. I'm guessing, and um, it's inspired. And I've travelled in Italy quite a bit, and it's one one of my favourite countries to travel in. So, I re it really resonated with me the pattern, and yeah, so I'm very happy with it. Like. The other side, it was literally like this. So I, I don't know what was happening. I, just, I just don't have, I don't understand. So I'm, I'm a lot happier with that. And it means as I change, I can still fit in it. So I'm happy. So the yarn I'm knitting it in is Ventures in Yarn Craft Undyed is the cream. Um, a new acquisition I got Oh, sorry, I'll show you the Hedge of Yarncraft undyed nicely. It's a Lux Sock fingering weight, 85% superwash, extra fine merino, 19.5. It is the softest, softest thing I've ever felt. And yeah, this is my favourite yarn. <laughs> so I'm I'm very happy about that. And I've found something to go do the other bit of colour work. So in the pattern, I'm doing Adventures in Yarn Craft Undyed as the black colour on here. And then the white colour is the Crafty Bird. Um, so I've got a little mini skein set. Um, skein, 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 oh. skein set uh, called Foxes at Midnight. Uh, I'll show you one of the colours. I'll show you the rest of my acquisitions because I don't want to give it away too much. And I've just got... the all about 20 grams this one is called stroke of midnight and it is the most beautiful blue so it's like a semi-solid so there's some darker bits some lighter bits and honestly this color matched with the undye you know how you keep seeing all those cream and white creamy whitey blue patterned this goes lovely so i might try and get another skein of this and do it like a this is nice and it's just the right amount. So I got had, so she's, I think she gives you quite a comfortable um, yarn measurement on the thing. Cause I, I had quite a lot left over. So I'm, I'm not too worried that it won't be enough, but it, if it isn't quite enough, I'll just adjust the color work a little bit just so it fits. But yeah, so 20 grams for the smaller sizes is fine for the, the middle color work. Um, yeah, so, I find it really nice to knit up and I did the colour work section I'd say in about eight hours last time so you know another day good day's knitting day and a half I'll be back to where I start where I finished last time so I'm not too fast uh, third colour you're gonna be surprised because I show it every every video and I will make it's being made into something now sorry I'm spitting everywhere now uh, it's the Hylas and the Nymphs, if you've not been, been watching before, by Pigment and Ply. Beautiful, extra fine uh, superwash merino, 56%, 44% mohair, finger and weight, and it's by Pigment and Ply Yarn. And it has similar colours to, hence why I chose this one, it has that kind of colour in it a little bit, so I thought that would bring it through. Yeah, so it's a beautiful, beautiful yarn, that one. 
they're all beautiful I'm, I'm really looking forward to making this and wearing it and it should be really roasty and hot by the time I finish it so that's good timing for me but you know I can get excited about wearing it in October because let's be honest September is always roasting in the UK uh, I'm going to make it short sleeve. I did see some people on Ravelry had done long sleeve versions so I might see how much wool I've got left over I might make it a longer one just to make it a bit more seasonal but we'll see we'll see because yeah sorry winding it all back up again yeah so I'm really pleased with that and yeah if you're also knitting the Novelli please let me know um I think it's quite a nice summer knit that one and you could make it in anything really I bet it'd be quite nice in a linen yarn as well but you know I just fancy something a bit more seasonal so I'm, I'm going for a bit of uh, merino which you know why not why not um yes yeah, so what's next I also cast on another one. Um, oh, you're coming back, Mr. Pig. You come in. I'll move some stuff so you can come up here. You want to come up here? You want another? Yeah. Shall I, shall I move the camera so you can be on the screen? Look, yeah, there's the TV on all its glory. Hello. And you go away. Sorry if you can see his paws. I'm just covering him. He's covered in paws. Nothing to see. You can't show that on the internet. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, we're a little bit sad at the moment, aren't we, darling? Hmm? We're a bit sad. Yeah, we're okay. We're all right. Yeah, number three was not a fun time. Okay, right, so. So, yes, I cast on something else, yay! Right, okay, so. Also, if you've been around a while, you know that I have had some yarn in my stash for a little while and I've been figuring out what to knit to make it sing. I want to do this yarn ju justice because it is stunning, stunning yarn. Um, so I've started to knit the diaphanous raglan and I'm, I am enjoying it, but you need to not have brain fog when you do it. That is for sure. Uh, this also, I frogged right back and started again because I didn't read the instructions clear enough. I got a bit muddled uh, because you hold, you have three bits of yarn going at the same time. Hence why you need to be focused, not distracted. It's not something you can just whip up, stock in it and forget about kind of thing. You've really got to be focused but it is beautiful and I'm really happy with the progress that I'm doing. So this is my more complicated knit and the Novelli is my more relaxed knit. Even though it's colour work, it's more relaxed because it's still stocking it and I'm not having to think about increases, decreases and three pieces of yarn. So <laughs> that's my karma one, weirdly. Um, yeah, so it is coming across quite nice. So you knit it, sleeve caps first. So I'll insert a picture of the dye first right on here. So this is the sleeve bit. So I'm guessing later on I pick these up and make the sleeve. Still debating if I want to do a long sleeve or a short sleeve. I'm kind of liking the little fluttery ones because it's mohair. I don't want it to be itchy. It's not very itchy, but you know, it's a really soft yarn. It's just, I'm worried if I do full long, but this is mohair and I'm okay. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, yeah, so you can hold it up like that. So you have Woolly Knit Plata is the, the main one. Woolly Knit Plata Merino, I should say Merino in Plata. It's just one of their cones. 
really beautiful yarn to work with and what I've done is I've split it oh, I've forgotten I've put it in here that's why it's getting all tangly I've split it so I've got another one the other side and then I've got the mohair so you have what the cone this side and then another ball that side and then they don't cross over in the middle so it's clear that makes sense because I, I, I just ended up holding double. And then I was like, why am I holding it double? This isn't making sense. And it was getting all laddery. And I was like, oh, I didn't read it properly. As you do. As you do. I rushed it. And then I, but I'm really loving like the increases. It is a stunning, stunning pulley. Jumper, sorry. And I'm, re I'm really looking forward to continuing this. But I think it's going to take me a while. Because this is a day's worth of knitting so yeah it's, it's, it's going to take a little while and you can get in a little bit of a tangle because you've got three balls of yarn going at the same time and stuff so yeah i would do it when you haven't got any distractions when nobody else is in the house and you're caffeined up perfect um yeah so the mohair is cheshire yarns new day if you haven't been here and seen it before. I hope the colour's okay. It's a bit dark today. I think it's going to rain. Hang on. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that with my face. That's a bit weird. How about that? That's better. Yeah, so you can see it is a pale blue mohair with blue speckles and lime green neon speckles. It is a stunner. And it is coming out really nice on here. Can you see? So yeah, this definitely does the yarn justice. Very happy with it. And yeah, I'm looking forward to finishing it. But it's going to be a little while. Okay, I'm not going to touch it anymore because it's just getting more and more tangled. And I don't want to be dealing with that shit right now. Oh, right. Where can I put you? Um, I haven't done anything, sorry, I'm talking and I'm not even looking at you. Oh. Yeah, so that's all I've cast on. Oh. Yeah, all I've cast on. Um, I haven't done any more on the strata because I got so much into the colour work, so, which is fine, you know, these things happen. Um, if you didn't watch last week's, I have started a number two strata. Best by Jacqueline Sizak and yeah, it's one of my favourite patterns for just comfort knitting. It, it is a good one, but I just needed something a little bit more focused this week. Um, what should, what should we talk about now, Poppy? He's sitting on the chair just opposite me. He's being my little camera buddy. Oh, should we do some acquisitions? Um. Okay, so, yeah, so I talked about earlier the Foxes at Midnight Crafty Bird bundle. Uh, so, I'll get that. I'll do that one next. It's so cute. And then it also has the blue as well that I was just knitting and showing you with. So, yeah, really, really pretty. I was going to wait, but I really wanted to cast off, so, you know. Never mind. So we have in the bundle, so again, yeah, it's Crafty Bird, Foxes at Midnight, and it's four ply, superwash merino, five mini skeins, all to about 20 grams, 80 meters per skein. Okay, so we have got, let's have a look, Foxy. It's a pretty, pretty foxy colour, isn't it? do it so i'm one sorry excuse my nails i haven't had a chance to take them off i'm sure uh, really lovely orange we have for the winnie pooh fans 100 acre wood it does remind me of the map some gorgeous colors in there and these two i'm not sure which one's which i'm gonna guess i think this one's squirrel nutkin so again, if you like Beatrix Potter, it's a lovely one. Quite similar to this one, I thought. 
color wise and then this one's i think earth dance lovely blues on that one and then this one is stroke of midnight again beautiful blue so yeah i'm not sure what i'm going to do with these four um maybe socks make a nice striped sock um yeah so i'm not quite sure i purely got this set for this color because i couldn't find a color that worked well with this um it's got so many beautiful warm tones in it that to find a color that complemented it there's quite a lot of cool tone stuff out there or it was quite too warm there wasn't anything like slightly warm and i really fancied like a, a dark warmish blue kind of moody blue and th th this is what i found i i looked <laughs> i looked everywhere um yeah so i got it for that but i'm really pleased with what i've got here this is the little worms um they make great for socks or just like a little bit of color work so i'm really pleased with these and yeah something will be knitted up in the near future out of these what do you think pop it yeah but he's he's highly highly involved and interested you're my director i'll put them there okay uh yeah um and i really like the crafty bird um they have really good what's the word themes interesting themes so if you have a look on their website they've got like um winnie the pooh beatrice potter i think there's some hobbit ones as well i think off the top of my head i might be wrong but their advent this year is his dark materials and my husband loves his dark materials so sorry fly um so i've, I've actually ordered um the kind of, it's like a half advent it's not a full advent because i i'm making my husband a jumper out of it i'm gonna make him a color work jumper which is a bit his dark materials maybe inspired as well so i'm really looking forward to doing that i've told my husband about it as well so he's really excited um yeah it's a bit early to be talking about christmas presents but it's something you have to you don't have to order it so far in advance but you know it's nice because you can do it in payment plan and it, it's good for the yarn dyer as well because they they've they can it's quite a large outlay so yeah they can buy the stock and not be out of pocket and have a lot of yarn left over in the end which i'm totally for and i've heard some negative things recently about yarn advents uh, that people do it and then they don't actually do the art advents but i haven't come across that and i am using i am ordering and highlighting reputable um yarn dyers stuff so that shouldn't happen i don't think so and they're quite established yarn dyers and they're at yarn festivals and things so you know i, I think we can be safe there um also have had an exciting yarn acquisition i ordered this last month it is the camels yarn club and i placed my order last month and i've just placed placed my next order because i love it so much and i wanted to say it before i said anything about the podcast because i don't want everyone to order it before me um yeah so i ordered the camels yarn uh advent not advent jeez young club sorry brain fog i didn't realize i was brain foggy today apparently um yeah so if you have ordered it also and you haven't received it and you don't want to see please skip a couple of minutes um but it is based on flipping things uh it's based on cornish myths and legends um oh sorry cornish myths and mysteries Ooh. um this month's one is based on the dancing stones called the merry maidens um says on the back here in the far west of Cornwall, near lamorna cove lies an ancient stone circle known as the merry maidens the circle consists of 19 granite stones estimated to be in, have have been constructed during the bronze age Although the intended purchase purpose of this circle has never really truly been discovered. 
Local legend speculates a more mystical origin. It is said that the granite stones were once young maidens who dared to dance on a Sunday, defying the Christian Sabbath. They were turned into stone as punishment for their disobedience, frozen in time for all eternity. What? <laughs> Oh, okay. I didn't read the second bit before I read. Oh, oh, all right. Turned into stone for dancing. But very pretty. And honestly, yarn is absolutely gorgeous. So it's sock set. So you get a main skein and you get a little skein. So the main skein is called Dan's Main or Dancing Stones. Uh, 100 grams. Beautiful colours. Look at those colours absolutely stunning and then this one is maidens of the stone again beautiful blues so i brought this originally because i wanted to knit my first pair of socks and now i'm like i don't want to save it for socks i want everyone to see it so i don't know what to do with it now um i was thinking of maybe holding it with this and having a nice stripy top like a, a raglan, um, but um, I don't know. I don't know what to do. What do I do? What do you do when your sock yarn is too pretty? I don't want to put this in a shoe. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to think about it. Um, feels really beautiful. Uh, it is superwash merino. Super seventy five percent superwash merino, twenty five percent nylon. Uh, hundred grams. 425 meters and 85 meters for the little guy 20 grams so yeah i'm really pleased with that i've ordered the next one i haven't done the sock set i've just done the main skein but you know but this one's really pretty so maybe i should have done the thing but i don't know what to do with this now because i love green i love blue oh, it's oh, so pretty yeah so i might i'm i need to knit something with it something stripy maybe Yes, what do you do? What do you do? Um, one more acquisition. It's something I got um, as a maybe for the Novelli. But again, like colours really lovely, but the Foxes of Midnight came first. And I started because I really like that one. So, But this is Quack Yarn. Oh, look at the colours. Right, so... There we go, getting true colour now. It's like berries. It's called Autumn Nights. So it's like berry colours with a little bit of rusty colour in there as well. Some it's got some blue, some purple. It's a really pretty. Oh yeah. Uh, ooh, ho, 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 ho. Really pretty colour. Um again, it would have gone really lovely. But I thought it might have been too, too matchy-matchy, if you know what I mean. And I wanted something a bit more semi-solid. Whereas this is, it's not too variegated, but it has got a variegation in there. So I've def definitely made the right decision. I will use this for something else. Not quite sure what yet. Maybe I'll make another Novelli and just use this as the top half. We don't know. We'll soon see. Um, I also have seen Caitlin Hunter's jumper which has horses on it. And I quite like the idea of having this as the horse. Have you seen that jump up? I'll insert a picture here. I, I'm not, I'm not someone who, you could be called a horsey person, but I do like horses. I don't go riding or anything like that. Um, mm. So I'm thinking maybe this as one of the horse, like horses on the colour work and then getting like a, a nice stony colour for the main colour and then hmm, maybe. I think it's an option. I really want that jumper. <laughs> it's really pretty. I, I have an addiction to Caitlin Hunter patterns now and I don't care. Um, <laughs> I've got so many on my wish list. You know. Um, also, I've been I have been adding stuff to Ravelry. Um, I did change my name on there, so make it easier for you to find me because it took me a while to find out how to change my name on there because I had my actual 
proper name on there for a bit and I was like, oh, I'm going to have to change it to Nays Knits. So yeah, find me on um, Ravelry as Nays Knits and you can see all my progress and stuff like that. Um, I don't update it brilliantly, but I am trying, I'm learning. It's a new new thing for me. So I, I do enjoy Ravelry. I, I love it for finding patterns and stuff like that. Search engine can be a bit, <clears throat> but you know, I, f I find it quite useful and yeah, I want to start using it for communication and showing what I'm doing and everything like that. Whereas before I was a little bit like, oh, I don't want people to see what I'm knitting, they'll judge me. Now I'm on I'm on the internet, so it's like, oh, sod it. <laughs> you know, I'll put it on Ravelry. Um, yeah, so come find me on there. Um, yeah, um, I think today's going to be a bit of a short one. Um, yeah. So... So if you didn't know, I've had a bit of an emotional month and I've had surgery, I've had a loved one go into hospital and they're still in hospital and yeah, I'm still not ready to talk about it. Can you do a whip for me so I can talk about it? What are you going to make? Bandana? Jumper. Should I make Poppy to jumper? Be like a jumper, little colourwork jumper. I think you'd murder me if I tried to put it on you. Maybe a cardigan. To go for. Okay, so I'm gonna go. So I'll see you soon. Thank you for coming, and I'll speak to you next week.